Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Sam from Historic Travels and welcome to another video. And as always, before we get started today, I'd just like to take a quick moment to welcome all my new subscribers and to thank everybody who's been leaving me comments and messages down below. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Now, just as a quick heads up for everybody here, in this video, we are going to be talking about the sinking of the Empress of Ireland, but there's something else about this video you need to be aware of. In this video, I hid what is commonly referred to in the video game industry as an Easter egg. Essentially what an Easter egg is, is it's something that the creator of a game, a video, whatever, hides in his work. And if you're the first one to find it, you can win a prize. Now, in the case of the Easter egg in this video, yesterday I went to the store and bought a copy of the movie Titanic, and then I took the digital code out of the movie, and then I hid the code somewhere in this video. Are you guys okay? I feel like you guys are looking at something and you're not looking at me. Was there, was there something up with the TV behind me? It looks normal. Mm. Mm. Oh well. But anyway, so I hid the code from the movie Titanic somewhere in this video. And if you are the first one to find the code, then you will get a free copy of the movie Titanic. So just keep your eye out throughout this video. Something's going to happen at some point in this video, and if you're not paying close attention, you will miss it. But essentially, the code will show up somewhere in this video, and if, you, if you're the first one to find it, you'll get a free digital copy of the movie Titanic. If you do find the code, just go to ParamountMovies.com, www.ParamountMovies.com, and type in the code. And if you're the first one to do it, you get a free copy of the movie. All right, everybody. Well, hey, without any further ado, let's get into today's topic. The Empress of Ireland was a steam-powered passenger vessel owned and operated by the Canadian Pacific Steamship Company, or CPR for short. She was built in the year 1906 and had a very long and very successful career at sea. However, in the early hours of the morning of May 29, 1914, all of that would change for the Empress of Ireland. Another steamship called the Sturag collided with the Empress of Ireland on her starboard side right around the midship section, and in just 15 minutes the entire vessel of the Empress of Ireland rolled over onto her starboard side and sank beneath the waters, taking with her most of the passengers and crew. How did this happen to the Empress of Ireland, and what caused this vessel to sink so quickly? The story of the Empress of Ireland is a very tragic one, and to be honest, the Empress of Ireland could be considered as Canada's Titanic. And what's really crazy about this whole disaster is that, unless you're an ocean liner enthusiast, this vessel has been widely forgotten about throughout history. So for this video, let's tell the story of the Empress of Ireland and see if we can shed some light on what happened to this vessel over a hundred years ago. The story of the Empress of Ireland's final voyage and sinking begins on May 28, 1914. On this day, the Empress of Ireland is preparing to depart on a transatlantic voyage from the city of Quebec. It's going to travel down the St. Lawrence River until it reaches the North Atlantic, and then it will do a transatlantic crossing and sail all across the ocean until it reaches the city of Liverpool. The captain of the Empress of Ireland's name was Henry George Kendall, a well-experienced sailor, and he had spent most of his professional life working on ocean liners. He had been recently appointed the captain of the Empress of Ireland around one month before the ship sank. Now, the Empress of Ireland was considered to be a very well-built and very safe vessel. The ship had more than enough lifeboats on board to accommodate everyone on board, and the Empress of Ireland was also equipped with watertight doors. However, there was one big difference between the watertight doors on the Empress of Ireland and watertight doors on other ships like the Titanic. You see, the Titanic's watertight doors, well, a good chunk of them on the Titanic were electric. Not all the watertight doors on Titanic were electric, but a good chunk of them were. On the Empress of Ireland, however, none of the watertight doors on that ship were electric. Every single watertight door on board the Empress of Ireland had to be closed manually by hand. So that means that a member of the ship's crew would have to go to the door and turn a crank to shut the door manually. Now, this one aspect in the Empress of Ireland's watertight doors would play a huge role in the coming disaster. Not long after the Empress of Ireland had left the city of Quebec and was beginning its transatlantic voyage, everything on board the vessel was proceeding smoothly. The passengers were going to dinner, people were settling in and going to their staterooms, the crew was settling in to get ready for the transatlantic voyage. Everything was proceeding pretty smoothly on board the Empress of Ireland. However, what everybody on board the ship didn't realize is that in just a few short hours, all of them would be fighting for their life in the frigid waters of the St. Lawrence River. But yeah, as May 28th was drawing to a close, everything was proceeding smoothly on board the Empress of Ireland. Now, one important thing I have to tell you guys here. A hundred years ago, people went to bed a lot earlier than they do in today's day and age. You see, most people during in today's world usually go to bed around midnight, 1, maybe even 2 a.m. But a hundred years ago, that wasn't very normal. 
A hundred years ago, people usually went to sleep around 9 or 10 p.m. and then they got up much earlier. That's just how things were a hundred years ago. So around 9 or 10 p.m. on the 28th of May, people were already asleep in their rooms on board the Empress of Ireland. Now this is very important to the story. But one person was not asleep, and that was the captain. He was still on the bridge of the Empress of Ireland, helping navigate the ship through the St. Lawrence River, making sure that everything was proceeding smoothly and that everything continued to operate smoothly on board the vessel. The weather was still clear and everything was fine. However, in the early hours of the morning on May 29th, as the ship was continuing to navigate the St. Lawrence River, things began to change. Around 1.30 in the morning on May 29th, 1914, the crew on board the Empress of Ireland spot this ship, the Storstad, roughly six miles ahead of them and heading towards their general location. So upon noticing this ship sailing towards the Empress of Ireland, the captain and crew on board the Empress make a course change to hopefully try to steer clear of this approaching vessel. You see, when the captain on board the Empress of Ireland noticed this other vessel beginning to approach, he became concerned because at the time the Empress of Ireland was still relatively close to the shoreline. So if everything continued like it was going at that moment, this approaching vessel would pass the Empress on the port side, putting the Empress in between this approaching vessel and the shoreline. So the captain on board the Empress didn't like this, so he decided to do a course change to basically give a little bit more clearance between the Empress and this approaching vessel, and to give him more clearance between the Empress and the shoreline. On the following map, the yellow line you see represents the course of the Empress of Ireland, while the red line you see represents the course of the Storstad. So what the captain on board the Empress of Ireland tried to do was he had his vessel head towards the center of the St. Lawrence River. So hopefully there would be plenty of clearance between the Empress and the shoreline and the Empress and the Storstad. With any luck, both vessels would pass by each other without incident with the Storstad passing the Empress of Ireland on the starboard side. This is a very common maneuver for the St. Lawrence River and was considered perfectly normal and perfectly routine. Once the crew on board the Empress of Ireland got the ship's new course and heading all taken care of, and they got the Empress's new position dealt with in the center of the St. Lawrence, they basically thought they were good to go. They thought that the two ships would pass each other and that there wouldn't be any issues. However, this is where things really started to change on board the Empress of Ireland. You see, right around this time, a real heavy fog moved in and completely surrounded the Empress. The ship and its crew lost all visibility. They couldn't see anything. And this other vessel that was approaching the Empress, it disappeared as well. They couldn't see anything around them due to this heavy fog. So the captain was concerned by this. So he decided to order the Empress of Ireland's engines to stop. And he thought he would just have the ship sit idly in the water and wait for conditions to improve. Now, this is where the captain of the Empress of Ireland did make a mistake. You see, under fog conditions, you are supposed to shut a ship's watertight doors, just as a precaution. However, the captain on board the Empress of Ireland failed to do so. In his mind, he thought that he had already taken all the precautions that were necessary. He thought that he had put the ship in a good position in the center of the St. Lawrence, and that this other vessel, even though they couldn't see it, they knew about where it was based on its course, and he thought it would simply just sail past the Empress while the Empress of Ireland was just sitting there waiting patiently in the St. Lawrence River for conditions to improve. However, something was about to happen that would make the captain on board the Empress of Ireland realize that he had just made a grave mistake. Now, even though the Empress of Ireland was currently sitting idle in the water, the ship's crew did resort to blowing the Empress's fog whistle as a means to let the Storstad know its general location. And the Storstad did the same. Both vessels were using their fog whistles. However, there was such incredibly low visibility that even with the extra help of the fog whistle, both vessels were having a hard time determining each other's location. Now, as the Storstad is navigating the fog, the captain of the Storstad decides to have its ship change course at the last second, and the ship is now heading straight towards the Empress of Ireland. Now, right around the time the Storstad made its fatal course change, the conditions around the Empress of Ireland were beginning to improve. The fog was beginning to clear up, and visibility was returning. Now, the captain, still on the bridge of the Empress of Ireland, began to look around for this ship and try to figure out where it was. And then as the visibility cleared up, he suddenly spotted the Storstead, sailing straight towards the Empress of Ireland. He orders the engines of the Empress full steam ahead to try to move the Empress out of the way of the approaching vessel. However, it's too late. The Empress of Ireland barely had time to start its engines before the unthinkable happened. 
And then at 1.56 a.m., it happens. The Storstad just emerged from the fog, and it was still sailing directly towards the Empress of Ireland. The bow of the Storstad slices right through the Empress's hull, piercing several watertight compartments and allowing the cold water of the St. Lawrence to flood inside the vessel. The captain orders the watertight doors in the Empress of Ireland closed. However, at this point, it's too late. The captain makes one last-ditch effort to try to keep the Empress of Ireland from sinking. He gets his captain's megaphone and yells at the captain of the Storstad to try to keep the vessel within the hole that it just made on the Empress of Ireland. It's his hope that the Storstad will be able to keep the hole partially sealed so the Empress of Ireland won't sink as quickly, and it would give them further time in order to try to evacuate everyone from the now-doomed Empress of Ireland. However, this plan would ultimately fail. You see, due to all the river currents currently flowing around the two vessels in the St. Lawrence, the Storstad would be unable to remain within the hole that it just made in the side of the Empress of Ireland. So these river currents push the Storstad free, and then once this happened, the freezing water of the St. Lawrence began rapidly flooding inside of the Empress of Ireland. Now, the Storstad struck the Empress's hull on the ship's starboard side. So once the Storstad was worked free and pushed away from the Empress of Ireland, within seconds, the Empress of Ireland began developing a very sharp list to starboard. And because all the watertight doors inside the Empress of Ireland are currently open, the water of the St. Lawrence basically had free reign to begin rapidly flooding the Empress of Ireland. Now remember how earlier in this video I told you about how a lot of the passengers on board the Empress of Ireland like to go to bed early? Well, this fact would play a critical role in who would end up surviving the evening. You see, most of the passengers on board the Empress were woken up by the impact between the Empress and the Storstead. However, those that weren't were woken by the sudden and sharp listing of the Empress of Ireland. The ship literally threw people from their beds and woke them up. And the people on board the Empress don't know this, but they literally have minutes to try to escape the vessel. And this is easier said than done due to the vessel's very sharp list to starboard. But what the people don't realize is that their attempt to escape was about to become much harder. You see, where the Storstad ended up hitting the Empress of Ireland, water began rapidly flooding the Empress's engine room. And the crew down there were working to keep the lights on for as long as possible. However, all power on board the Empress of Ireland would go out just minutes after the two vessels collided. Now, try to imagine what this would have been like from a passenger's perspective on board the Empress of Ireland. Remember, they're in their rooms, they're sound asleep, there's nothing going on, they think everything is fine on the vessel, and then all of a sudden you feel the impact of the Empress and the Storstead. And even that, even when you feel that, you're like, okay, maybe some people woke up, but not all. And you're like, wait a minute, what was that? And then all of a sudden, the ship rapidly lists to starboard and flings you from your bed while you're still waking up and trying to figure out what's going on. Now, I don't know about you guys, but you know, when most people wake up and they're startled awake by some kind of incident, they're pretty disoriented at first. You know, it takes time to wake up and figure out what's going on. But in the case of the Empress, when it did its sudden list to starboard, it literally threw people from their beds the ship listed so heavily and so quickly. So imagine you're sound asleep in your room and everything's fine, then all of a sudden you get thrown across the room and into the wall and all the while you're still trying to wake up and figure out what's happening. I mean, imagine what that must have been like for people. So at this point, people start trying to make their way up to the boat deck because, okay, you're on a listing ship, you know you need to get out. You know, you know, that something, you need, you know that something's going on. However, if you're deep inside a vessel and it's listing, stairs don't work very good. You know, it's hard to walk on a vessel that's listing. And every second that goes by, the ship is continuing to list further and further and further to starboard. So literally, it's a race against the clock to try to get out of this ship as quickly as possible. Because if you don't, you'll soon find that the Empress's list to starboard is so sharp that it's impossible to get out of the vessel. Now, during this particular voyage, the Empress of Ireland had around 1,477 people on board, rapidly trying to get up on deck and get off of the vessel before it sinks. But now, due to the Empress of Ireland's very sharp list to starboard, all lifeboats on the Empress of Ireland's port side are impossible to launch. The only lifeboats that they can attempt to launch at this point are the lifeboats on the Empress's starboard side. 
Now, fortunately, one of the first things that the crew did after the impact on the Empress of Ireland was transmit a distress call, so there were other vessels on their way to the Empress's location. And then around four to five minutes after the impact, the crew began to prep and try to launch some of the Empress's lifeboats. However, right around this time, the unthinkable happens. The Empress of Ireland's power begins to fail, and the ship is about ready to be plunged into total darkness. Now, remember all those people that are still currently trying to find their way out within the sinking vessel? Well, they're about to have to try to find their way out of this ship in total darkness. You heard me right. Just five minutes after the initial impact, the Empress of Ireland loses all power and the entire ship is plunged into total darkness with 1,400 people still inside the ship trying to find their way out. Now, as the sinking of the Empress of Ireland was progressing, people began to work their way up onto the boat deck of the Empress and begin positioning themselves around the Empress's lifeboats. However, the percentage of people that did make it up onto the boat deck was very low considering how many people were within the vessel. I mean, think about it. Trying to escape a listing and sinking ship is difficult enough, but try to imagine doing that in extremely crowded hallways and in total darkness. I mean, honestly. The best chance people had to escape the ship was right after the impact while the listing of the vessel was beginning. But if you waited just a few minutes, the listing of the ship would be so severe, and then once the power went out, you'd be plunged in total darkness. It would be next to impossible to escape the Empress of Ireland, especially with crowds and crowds of people in these listing and pitch black hallways, all trying to escape the vessel at the same time. It is currently 2.07 a.m. on board the Empress of Ireland. The vessel is listing very heavily to starboard, and also keep in mind it's only been 11 minutes since the initial impact. But at this point, the vessel's power is completely out, the ship is listing heavily to starboard, yet somehow the crew has been able to launch five lifeboats from the ship's starboard side, and the crew has begun working on launching the sixth lifeboat. However, while they were trying to prep this lifeboat and get it ready for launch, the Empress of Ireland began listing once again. And then at 2.09 a.m., it happened. While the crew was still working on launching the sixth lifeboat away from the Empress of Ireland, the ship began to roll completely onto her starboard side, throwing everybody who was on the deck of the Empress into the freezing waters of the St. Lawrence River. Now, once the ship stopped rolling and began to rest on her starboard side, this allowed people that were still trapped within the vessel a means of escape. People actually began climbing out of the Empress of Ireland through doors and windows on the Empress of Ireland's port side and literally sitting on the hull of the Empress of Ireland waiting for rescue. Now, all the people that were still clinging to the port side hull of the Empress of Ireland while the ship was resting on its starboard side, they actually thought that the bottom of the Empress had made contact with the bottom of the river so they thought the Empress would just sit there for a bit. However, the St. Lawrence River in the area that the Empress of Ireland sunk was much deeper than that, so the vessel would eventually sink. And those who were still clinging to the hull of the Empress of Ireland said it was just like the tide coming in. They said the ship rested on its starboard side, just kind of floating on the water briefly, and then it's like the water just slowly climbed up the hull of the ship, like the tide coming in, and the water just slowly came up higher and higher, until the water washed over the entire hall of the Empress of Ireland and the ship dropped out from underneath them. Now, as soon as all these people were in the water, the Storstad began immediate efforts to try to rescue as many people as possible from the freezing waters of the St. Lawrence River. And it wasn't too much longer that other rescue vessels would arrive on the scene as well. But now, the total loss of life for the Empress of Ireland, after the entire sinking was over and the dust had settled, they figured out that of the 1,477 people on board the Empress of Ireland, 1,012 people perished in the night of the sinking, and it only took the Empress of Ireland 15 minutes to sink from the time of impact to the time that the vessel disappeared beneath the surface of the St. Lawrence River. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting. And yeah, now you know the story of the Empress of Ireland. Now, one thing I didn't touch on too much in this video was the other vessel, the Storstad. It wasn't too badly damaged in the impact with the Empress of Ireland. I mean, its bow got smashed in, but the ship remained afloat. And it was extremely helpful in picking up the survivors from the Empress of Ireland. And honestly, I believe it's because of that ship that so many people did survive the sinking. Now, other rescue ships were on the way and they would arrive in the not too distant future. I think the next 20 minutes or so, other rescue ships did start arriving. 
But still, because the store stat was there, they managed to save a lot more people from the Empress of Ireland. And you also have to remember, the water temperature around the Empress that night was just a few degrees above freezing. So honestly, if the store stat had sunk as well, I really don't know how many people would have ended up surviving the Empress of Ireland. It was really good that the store stat was there to help as many people as it did before the Empress of Ireland went down. Special thanks to my very first Captain Level Patreon supporter, John Shepard. Thank you so much for all the support, man.